Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is kind of the first video on the pool where we're actually doing stuff. So um, while I'm waiting for the hole to be dug, one of the things that I could start on was some of the electrical and the automation and to get that kind of done. So I want to show you what I've done so far. Um, for context, I would refer you to previous videos I did on the house electrical system and you would see that this is uh, the main disconnect outside my house. And um, previously, there was just a 100 amp sub panel uh, connected there. And I had originally put that in for the pool sub panel, right? Just to make sure I had plenty of power. And that was before I really did a lot of research on pools and what I'd want to do and learn that, uh, you know, how some of the automation worked and a lot of those automation uh, kits had dedicated sub panels. So basically I ripped out the old and put in the new. So I want to take you through what I did. Um, so previously I just had this inch and a half conduit just going straight into the side of the old sub panel and feeding it. And as you can see by how this guy is wired, you know, um, constructed, right? That wasn't an option. I had to go in through the bottom. That was my only, that was my only outlet. The only knockout they give you, unless I want to bore my own, was this inch and a quarter slash inch and a half knockout here. Uh, so I had to go in there. So what I did was I basically used an LB to go up in there and an astute eye will know, ah, it's not perfectly level crooked. You know, it's kind of crooked. Yeah, this thing, this is hard. <laughs> for me at least okay this panel probably weighs 70 pounds okay so hoisting that up there and then getting it to mark you see we've got like three tap cons and three more tap cons up there right six tap cons to hold this thing in place and i've got it it's not perfect okay but it's sturdy it's not going anywhere but trying to hold that square plumb and true you know while my daughter helped me mark you know with a sharpie mark the holes to drill and then drilling through irregular brick etc all while trying to to you know put this up and keeping all this level and square and everything yeah it's a nightmare but it's in it's sturdy it ain't perfect um but basically the panel's level <laughs> the conduit not so much but it works and then I, you know i did extra strapping there with a, a piece of strut on that on that little um kind of nipple basically right uh, just to make sure that everything is as secure as i can make it so that's what we did uh one thing i did change um Previously, I had um, one of the branch circuits coming in from uh, inside the house, right, where I had basically the, an outdoor GFCI receptacle, which was down there, um, feeding the Christmas light outlets, right? So I had it from the sub panel to the GFCI outlet and then back up through feeding here into a, a switch inside the garage. And then from there, going and feeding all of these, uh, you can kind of see it above there, above the floodlight, all these... Uh, outlets them in the eaves to do Christmas lights. Uh, so um, I basically changed my joint because those wires that were joined in the old box would not reach. So I basically cut them back and ran new wire, right? So my splices are now in uh, that box, right? So basically what we got here, I'll take you through that wiring and then I'll t take you through the new wiring. So we've got my 20 amp circuit, just like before, right? So we got the hot going to you know, load side of now the GFCI um, outlet here. This panel actually came with a knockout to where you could have it integrate on the side. And so that's what I did. Uh, while I did this, I also took the opportunity to get a deeper bubble cover here. Okay. All right. So, so that way I'm just, because this will definitely be an in-use outlet. I plan on driving, um, like when I actually do proper landscape lighting, I will drive the exterior lighting transformer from that outlet. So it's definitely going to be planned to be in use. So get a bigger one just to make sure uh, we have no issues, right, with cords and all that. So, yeah, right, uh, line side there and then load side, right, out and down and spliced, you know, that way. And then just a joint here to uh, pigtail all the grounds for the box and... Um, grounding the box and grounding the uh the branch circuit as well since it's right there um the other thing we had to do was this panel as you can see that label right there copper conductors only important right if the manufacturer says it well you gotta do it so i originally fed this with aluminum so out with the aluminum all right i think i fed it uh two watt and instead we ran number three copper 
um, which uh, by my understanding, she's even about 100 amps, which should be plenty. I've got a 100 amp breaker on there. This panel, I believe, is rated for 125. Um, and at the time, actually, what happened was I was planning on running number two, just to make sure. And I bought number two at Lowe's. Because they don't carry number three. They carry number two or four. So I bought number two. And I got home. And then I looked at the wire and realized they sold me number three. So they had number three spool. I was like, oh, crap, really? And I didn't want to deal with it. I was like, it's, it's going to be fine. It's not that much wire. If I really need more than 100 amps, you know, we'll be fine, right? <laughs> um, and I already had this thing feeding a 100 amp breaker because at the time, COVID, I couldn't find 125 amp breakers. <laughs> so it had a uh, 100 amps. So it'll work. It's ready for 100 amps. I don't think I'll need any more of, than that anytime soon. And if I need to run 100, more than 100 amps of power out of this panel, Lord knows what I'm doing. And if I can afford that power bill, I can afford to swap out the conductors. So this should be good. So that's what we did. Um, you know, normal feeding, right? Face tape, et cetera. And then along with that as a number four copper ground, I believe. And so just landing that right on the ground bar. And you can see this is a sub panel. So we got neutrals and, and ground bar separated from the factory. Um, so that is about it of the basic um, wiring here. I'll take you through some of the specifics and kind of what we're going to do. So first off, this Hayward panel, this is the Hayward Omni Logic. This is the big boy, their biggest flagship panel. Um, look it up if you want to see all the all of the uh, features it has, because it has a lot, and I'm not going to read the manual to you and, and, and list them all. But suffice it to say, it's all the automation that you think you could ever want to do for a pool or you know, pool, spa, and I would extend that to garden ponds and that kind of stuff you could do with this thing so it's pretty cool so here's how you kind of set it up so first off these wires here okay are powering the the main the guts right all the control boards and automation and they call basically you need to run this on a dedicated circuit and they they call it the current consumption as five amps so i put in a 15 amp breaker because you don't get five amp breakers so 15 amp breaker and then just you know hot and neutral right just two wires uh the ground is the chassis and everything so it's 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 fine there right so that's what we did there uh this 20 amp is that existing circuit for all the all the outlets like i told you about here's a 20 amp circuit that is going to be for the pool lighting so dual function gfci afci breaker um you only technically need a gfci per code and per manufacturer recommendations but i went ahead and did the dual function because it was uh i mean just as just as expensive right so why not get the afci too this is a this is electrical lighting in a pool and for our pool uh, we went with the 12 volt lighting so it's gonna have 12 volts in the pool right for the lighting and then run to a transformer that's got mount on the wall that's actually gonna feed this thing um one thing to note because i made this mistake is I got so used to the plug-on neutral uh, dual function breakers that I did for the rest of the house. That's what I bought originally for this. And I this thing is not plug-on neutral capable, as far as I can see. <laughs> so I did, uh, I had to take that back and get the one with the neutral pigtail. So um, I would certainly uh, look at that uh, and make sure you don't make that mistake. Uh, it's also worth noting, this panel is listed for a variety of breakers, uh, home line and maybe like some Siemens. And does it say, oh, it says over here. Here you go. Here's where they're rated for, right? So Eaton, Cutler Hammer, Murray, Simmons, Squirty, Home Line, right? So uh, worked out for me since the entire property is Squirty, Home Line. That's what I'm using because why would I complicate things? And then the other uh, breaker here is for the pool pump, 240 volt GFCI protected. That is a requirement. You have to spend the money per code to get that pump GFCI protected. And hey, it's water and electricity, don't skimp on this. Um, it, you know, why not? Um, so that's 20 amp um, and that should be exactly what I need for that for that pump. Cause that pump is a variable speed. So I think it's like a five horse or, or along those lines, variable speed. And this is what the manufacturer recommended as near as I could tell. Though, to be fair, I haven't actually seen the motor nameplate on this pump yet. I just have looked at the manual. So uh, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised and I'll have to change it all out. So that'll be fun. Anyway, um, so that's that. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I wired in the control panel for this thing. 
and that is the one piece I was able to do. There's a variety of other sensors and stuff this thing came with, as you can see, and we'll get into that as we do the pool plumbing uh, with the water pipe and all that, kind of, all that kind of stuff. But for now, this thing came with a wired control panel, and so that is what I installed. So if you'll look at the structure of this thing, you basically have this low voltage gutter, right? So this is for all the kind of data communications and, and whatnot. And then you got high voltage over here for your relays and expandability and all that stuff. So the control panel plugs into this port up here, right? It's nice. It's it's the only six pin port, uh, connector, so you can't screw it up. Um, and it came with a 15 foot cable. Now, trying to figure out where to mount this, honestly, the best place for to try to keep the wall as clean as possible for anything else I might in the future, because all the pool equipment is going to go over there where that uh, garden hose is. I decided to mount the thing right here. This is this little control panel. And it probably won't get much use, right? But it provides some functions. You know, number one, you can just pop it up and, you know, do stuff if you need to. But it also provides ports for Ethernet, which I'm definitely going to utilize. And there's a USB port. Uh, oh, right there. So USB and Ethernet, right? Uh, USB is for firmware updates. And then Ethernet, we're going to run inside the house. That'll be another video. Um, but this is the cable. And what sucks is they, you know, this is just all fixed and connected. I couldn't, you know, cut it down or anything like that. And that's annoying. So trying to feed this thing because I had to feed the connector through this. Okay. And on top of that, I had to uh, feed it only through a half inch knockout unless I want to bore that out because that's all they gave me. All this stuff is half inch. So I, I went and did a knockout here. And I used half inch flex and I transitioned to a UF half inch UF connector to transition to the open cable. This thing's rated to be out in the elements. I could have just ran it bare, but I wanted to try to protect it as much as I could, right? So I chose to do flex and then transition. This is actually a rigid female to female nipple and then a, uh, a half inch uf connector which i i did some tape on it just because not like it's gonna matter but hey it's, it's threads outside why not so i put some tape on it to try to seal everything as much as i could and even so there's still a pr pretty big gap here because i had to bore this out in order to get the connector to fit and even with that i'd use some dielectric grease to get it all all happy and solid right so but that's how i did it uh certainly let me know how would you guys you know run this to protect that thing as much as you can in conduit right while still dealing with that connector, right? And and I, you know, I did not want to re-punch anything or, and whatnot on that connector. And maybe I could have, right? Maybe those are just punch down type of connections where I could have re-terminated the thing and made my life simple. So guys who are more familiar with the, this kind of low voltage stuff than me, let me know, right? Did I do it the hard way? Or uh, is, there, you know, is there a better way? So I think that's about it. Um, that's all I got for this. Um, this video, all right? I'm gonna put this dead front cover on and I'm gonna go inside where it's a little warm, warmer. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, future pool videos will be coming, but uh, for now, this is where we're at. So, um, thank you all again for watching. If you like the content uh, that I'm bringing you on the channel, please like, share, subscribe. It really helps the channel out and I greatly appreciate it. So, thank you again. We'll see you in the next video.